What's going on guys? I am here in Salt Lake City at the RVX show for 2019. This is the show that showcases all of the equipment, all of the different models, all of everything associated with RVs as well as the manufacturers and everybody who supports them. So I will be here for the next several days trying to film everything I can at this show. Let's take a quick look. What's going on guys? I am inside of a very interesting floor plan of Toy Hauler. So this is a Vengeance and it is a front kitchen, mid living room area, but it has a really nice inviting living room. Typically when you are in a Toy Hauler, you kind of sacrifice the living room and the kitchen area because they are trying to make best use of that space. Typically you're gonna see the bedroom up front and then of course you'll see the bunk beds in the back. In this coach, the bedroom is in the back, queen size with the ramp behind the master bedroom. This is a massive toy hauler. This is the 385 FK13. Has a huge slide up here where the living room and the kitchen is, but it has a really nice interior to it. Taking a quick look into the bathroom area. Very nice layout in here as well, a lot of room. It's a bit difficult to film some of these because you have people that kind of just run up inside of them and interrupt kind of in the middle of your filming, but this is an open trade show, so kind of expect it. But this is a really cool unit. This is the nicest floor plan I think I've seen on a toy hauler in a long time. Only downside is it has a queen size bed. If you can live with that, it's actually pretty nice. Right across from it is a smaller fifth wheel, but this has an interesting layout to it. It feels very homey inside. This is the 305 ML6. This is an Arctic Wolf. Let's take a look inside of this coach. Check this out. Talk about a cozy little kitchen. Feels like you're in a little log cabin, actually. Has this nice pantry with the glass window on it. Really nice cabinetry. Living room is really nice as well. Three love seats, theater seating here. These fold out into a big bed. Nice kind of a faux brick back. It's just a wallpaper, but it looks really nice. This is one of the cozier interiors to a fifth wheel I've seen. And this is an Arctic Wolf, and they make pretty good units. It is owned by Forest River. Has a wardrobe slide right here. Queen size bed. Very cool floor plan. Let's take a look at some more. So you may not know, but Coachman recently changed the look of the Brookstone. The Brookstone is their, I guess, semi-premium line of fifth wheels. It is above the Chaparral, and they've gone to an entirely different look. It's definitely a larger footprint. Let's take a look at this new Coachman Brookstone. So I can already tell from the outside that this is going to be a rear living room floor plan. It has a drop frame with a huge storage and it uses three inch aluminum beams for the floor, which is really nice, plus a radiant barrier underneath. It has a 10 inch I-beam connected to a 12 inch I-beam. So that is something that's different. A lot of drop frames are either six or eight inch I-beams. This actually has a 10 inch I-beam as its drop frame. That's very nice and that is special because not a lot of fifth wheel manufacturers do that. Still uses the traditional rack and pinion slide system. I can appreciate that. Let's take a look at the suspension system. Dexter Equiflex, not a bad system, and it has the heavy duty shackles. Let's take a look inside of this coach. This is the 310 RL for rear living room. This is really nice. Again, the Brookstone is a step above the Coachman Chaparral. And one thing I like about Coachman fifth wheels in general is how ergonomic everything is, how they think about countertop space, how they think about placement of things, coffee maker, where you're going to put these different things. I'm a big fan of these floor plans mainly because they do a good job in incorporating the things that people want into a fifth wheel or a travel trailer. Going up the steps, good sized bathroom very very similar to my bathroom has a two-piece shower so in the past you'd get a one-piece shower in the Brookstone now it's a two-piece so I guess that was a compromise 
master bedroom area is very nice. There's a queen bed in here, even though you could put a king size bed. You can see the extra space for it. Has the sensors for the air conditioning system. Some people prefer the queen size bed simply because they don't need a king size bed and it gives you a lot more room on each side. Plus, you have room for a built-in washer and dryer. Huge, huge closet area up front. Does not have whisper quiet air conditioning systems. That's something that Coachman has never put in their fifth wheels. I don't know if it's gonna be an option at some point. I wish it was. Nice thermostat system here on the wall. You know something a lot of fifth wheel manufacturers also don't do is put in a little grab bar here for when you're going up and down the stairs. Not a big deal for adults, but if you have little kids, should definitely be there for safety. Overall, this is a really nice coach. I love the solid surface countertops. They look really nice. A lot of design in the, uh, the solid surface finish. Nice size pantry. It has the newer Furion stove and oven. Very nice. It does have frameless windows, but I do wish it had LED tail lights. They use incandescent lights on this model. A very, very simple thing to change out, but should just be included considering they're so inexpensive now. Again, I love the fact that it uses a 12 inch I-beam frame with a 10 inch drop frame section. Auto leveling, of course. Going into the basement side with the water connections. They put a nice rubberized floor mat here, so if you throw things in and out, you don't have to worry about damaging it. But from a structural perspective, I love the frame, I love the drop frame, and I love the flooring system too. Very, very large aluminum rails. And right across from it, we have this Phoenix fifth wheel. This is gonna be one of their lighter ones. This one is the 30BH for bunkhouse is a mid-bunk unit. Now the bunkhouse is not on a slide on this specific unit. So traditionally, you would see a bunkhouse unit with the slide out. This one has two really nice length bunks. This is a lot of space actually. When you're inside of here, you have a TV connection, you have a dresser, you have a cabinetry. That's a really well thought out bunkhouse. For the back of this unit, has two opposing sofas or love seats. One that turns into a bed here, and then you have a theater style here. Nice TV on the back, lots of windows. You lose the cabinets up top though, but it does have a nice dinette area and a nice size kitchen with quite a bit of countertop space. And this is gonna be a smaller unit. So if you're looking for a lighter weight unit, one that would be better for maybe a three quarter ton truck or a single rear wheel one ton, this would be a good one. Nice size shower. Has pretty good ceiling height too, roughly 6'4". You could be pretty tall. Now the closer you get to the front, it's gonna start sloping down a little bit, but not too bad overall. Queen size bed, a lot of room on each side, plus a wardrobe slide. This is not a drop frame, so you see how the frame kind of steps up here, but you still have quite a bit of room. This is gonna be your traditional two inch aluminum framing underneath. So check out this beast. This is a Grand Design Solitude. This is the ST380FL. This is a mid-kitchen coach. Front living area. Grand Design is good about putting these little tables that kind of plug into the armrests of the love seats and the sofas. Both of these of course are going to fold out into a bed. Dual beds. Guys, I am going to be here for the next couple of days checking out as many of these coaches as I can. There are a lot of motorhomes here. Not 100% sure how much time I'll spend in those. I know that it's a very popular type of RV and a lot of people enjoy them but I generally stick to travel trailers and fifth wheels, though you might see me in a few of the motorhomes. Anyways, guys, if you haven't had a chance, now is a great time to subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. I'll talk to you again very soon.